What's happening, everybody? This is the Good Kraken Show. I am one of your hosts, Ernell Pearson, alongside the inevitable one, Devin Stanford. Hey, what's cracking? What's popping? And our oh, brandest newest boy, Sledge315. Yeah. How you doing, baby? How you doing? Good, good. We rocking. We rocking. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it's a good day, guys. Boys, how's your guys' day going? Is it busy? Y'all be staying busy today? Go, go, yeah. go. I got my yeah. workout in. Yeah, and, I know. Um, I now <laughs> we're here. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. Sledge, I uh, I remember you just telling us a little bit ago that you had uh, another show that you did prior to this, right? Yeah, it was actually yesterday. It was on my channel, so I was actually hosting, which is the first time I've done something like that. It was fun though. I'm oh. like, I'm gonna be doing more of this stuff. So, Very like, nice. Oh, okay. Back awesome. to back. I'm like, sweet. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, dude. Well, you've been you've been keeping hella busy, huh? Like way yeah. busy, way busy. <laughs> yeah, like I'll go to bed at two and be like, I gotta be up in four hours, and I'm like, that's not good. I can't do that again. <laughs> Next day it does the same thing. I'm like, I thought yeah. I wasn't gonna do this, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hey, hey, the the, the yeah. life and pride of of doing the thing, man. Doing the Hell fucking yeah. thing, dude. That's that's always good, man. So uh, let me let me ask you something real quick before we kind of get into the uh, the Jiffy Run here. Um, so you you play a lot of Rust played a lot of rust up yes. until you know yes. you being busy recently but uh how how long have you been on that how long have you been down on the rust game you're opening pandora's box to me and bringing back <laughs> mm. the dark days of sledge mm. Mm. Uh, i've been playing that game for like four or five years now on and off and it was like one of my number it still is one of my number one most streamed games and so i've seen it come from where it was to where it is now and it's pretty crazy so okay i've been okay. In it. i've been in it for sure yeah, dude, that's that's good shit, man. Devin, have you played Rust? I've definitely dabbled in it, but I've been more of a DayZ player myself. So uh, I got Trash. a lot of that uh, PvP experience in Rust, though. I did a lot of that with a few of my friends who, I don't know, have like 3,000 hours on that game. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. That's, yeah, that's a fucking lot, man. Yeah. That's so yeah. much. So just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 3, yeah that sounds no, about right. Our, that sounds about right. Our, our boy uh, Logan who actually, he helps us with the show. He is a huge Rust player, though. Oh, so, oh, so he's big, he's big yeah, on the shit. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I see you. I see you all. I see, I see you guys. We got we got a ton mm -hmm. of uh, Sledge's family up in the chat. What's happening, guys? Hope y'all are having a good day, too. Uh, but good thing we're not talking about Rust today, guys. We are talking about Outriders still working out the kinks, Konami continuing to tease all of us, and what it's like starting an AAPI-owned business, because this is the Good Kraken Podcast, a show for nerdy, marginalized peoples giving you the video game and pop media news, reviews, and discussions that you want to hear every Tuesday and Saturday at 7 p.m. and 1 p.m. respectively. If you are watching live, you can submit questions and topics at tinyurl.com slash GK submissions to be a part of the show. Uh, if you're having a good time so far, you can watch us record the show live and ad free by subscribing right here at twitch.tv slash Good Show. If you have Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch Prime. We would love for you to give that to us or our man here, Sledge, to help keep us pushing content mm -hmm. out for all of you uh, that are listening or watching at home. Um, but if you've emptied your pockets for the latest and greatest in entertainment, that is totally fine. You can support us by going to our YouTube channel, by clicking the link in the About section of our Twitch page and clicking that beautiful bell and big red button or by subscribing to our podcast channel, by searching Good Kraken with an exclamation mark and leaving a review there. Boys, let's do a little bit of uh, some 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 housekeeping here real quick. We've got a few things that we want to talk about real fast. Um, our Good Kraken Mortal Kombat review episode is out now on YouTube and podcast services. That was our episode from Tuesday. You can check that out there if you want to hear us uh, kind of rant and rave about all the weird bad takes people have had about the Mortal Kombat movie that just recently came out. Uh, which Sledge, did you enjoy? Did you watch that yet? Yes. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah, yes, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. Some people were a little iffy. I liked it though. That's I liked that's it where we were. That's where we were, <laughs> yeah. dude. We we really liked it. There were just some people Compared that were the like. Other ones? Yeah, yeah, dude, exactly. Hard seven. I'm like, whatever. Hard seven. Hard seven like, out of ten. Yeah, that's yeah, so what I gave it. A yeah. seven out of ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man, I don't know why people were going in there just looking for fucking Damn. Dark night levels of of of, enter of entertainment. And I'm just, <laughs> I know. Uh, you guys are fucking Christian Bale to do Mortal Kombat. Out of this oh, damn world. That would be world. sick. That would oh. be sick, though. Oh, my God. Oh, my <laughs> God. Someone was like, three out of ten. Was not impressed. I'm like, a three? 
I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you're a critic. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're a critic, man. dude. Like, I was like, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a better rating than that. So I was like, damn. <laughs> okay. Easy <laughs> evolution was better. <laughs> tough, tough audience out here. Tough audience out here. Tough audience. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, no. That's Yikes. Fluffy. Come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, we we also. Talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a gameplay stream uh VOD up on our Twitch page. Devin on Thursday night did a gameplay stream of the brand new Pokemon Snap that had just come out. Um it was lit. Did I say Thursday night? Friday night. Last night. It was yeah. lit. It was super, <laughs> super, super fun. Go check that out. Mm-hmm. Devin plays for a good like hour and a half um of of mostly menus. It was mostly menus. Yeah. That that game, that game was definitely <laughs> an issue. Just menus. Just menus and yeah. tutorials. It was great. Uh, tonight at 5 p.m., me and Devin are going to be doing a gameplay uh, stream of our Resident Evil Village demo playthroughs. I will be doing the village and Devin will be doing the castle. We'll be showing all of you what the demo was like for anyone who has not played it yet and is interested in getting into Resident Evil Village. It's going to be a good time. Be here 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We will be doing that later on this afternoon. And then finally, our good fellow good Kraken and friend needs help. Wreck-It Raven, which is twitch.tv slash Wreck-It Raven, their livelihood is on the line, and we need you guys to give a hand by going to streamelements.com slash Wreck-It Raven slash tip. Uh, Raven's PC just recently started crapping out on her. We want to try to help out as much as we can. She's a full-time streamer. She needs a a little bit of a hand. We want to try to push that that direction. So please go there. Help Raven out. They could use it. They're a wonderful fucking person, I promise you have been doing great things with charity and working with the communities and stuff so uh with that said y'all let's go into our first segment here where we talk a little bit about nerdy news stuff um first off here and uh we we got some nightmares going on our first news story (laughs) (laughs) Devin, i'm sorry our first news story is outriders gets biggest patch to date with bug fixes balance changes and more this comes from eddie mccutch Matt Makuch, Makuch, we'll just say Makuch. That sounds about right. Uh, from from GameSpot, uh, it reads like this: The biggest patch to date for Outriders is now available, fixing a very long list of bugs that players have reported since launch. This patch does not, however, implement the long-awaited inventory restoration. Devin, I'm sorry. Uh, the restoration process for the inventory wipe issue was planned to release already, but it still needs more work from developer People Can Fly. Some quote-unquote edge cases recently came up, and this required the studio to retest the process quote-unquote several times over. As work continues on this restoration patch, People Can Fly separately worked on a general patch that is available now. Uh, the April 30th patch for Outriders fixes a number of crash scenarios and addresses, numerous other issues and bugs, including a problem that could case the game to get stuck in the sign-in screen. Uh, the update also makes changes to weapon balance with AI snipers, now giving players more time to dodge your shots. Additionally, the amount of knockback from creatures in the Stargrave expedition has been reduced. Uh, you guys can find the patch notes for this on the People Can Fly Reddit page. Uh, you can find it just by Googling it too as well. Uh, the reason I brought this story up is because our friend here, Devin, our co-host here got yeah. stung by the Outriders uh, inventory white bug when we were in in the top peak of our grind of that game. Uh, Devin, how you doing? How you doing, babe? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I'm still pained, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was uh, researching this a little bit more. Um, I did find that People Can Fly is going to be doing... Um, a grievance package for everybody this happened to recently where they're essentially giving everybody <laughs> god tier roles in the game grievance package so, is a good way to put that yeah oh, <laughs> right yeah. yeah no seriously my character every everything i had literally everything in my inventory got wiped and that character can't even log into the game it crashes you from the servers every time you try to log in with that character right now <laughs> oh wow it was a lot worse than it sounded Oh, yeah, it was bad. Yeah. It was bad. Like, and I could see the look on his face <laughs> just flush away. It's just all the happiness of his life of us playing that game for like three hours prior. Just gone, gone, like snapped away by Thanos. Like it was it was nuts. Like oh, I God. my heart was broken, broken for him. Now, Sledge, you obviously haven't played Outriders yet. You haven't really jumped on that game yet. Have you ever had a game breaking bug like hit you like this hard? Uh, not off the top of my head, 
But I mean, when you say game breaking, I know the feeling because I'll play Rust with going back to that. <laughs> like, All right, log off. Wake up next morning, everything's gone. Yep. Whole building oh. is just destroyed, and you're like, "What?" And you got like, you know, a bunch of people putting a bunch of hours, and you text your friends that are at work, and be like, "It's gone." Like, what? Well, it's all just gone. And that's all you can say. And then your day is ruined, you know? So I know the feelings. So when you when you said that, I was like, oh, that sounds really bad. And yeah, then you're like, yeah. the character can't even log in. I'm like, that's even worse, dude. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. to pick up there. You start so cold that's, sweating. That's where I relate. Yeah, I, I, had to start, I had to start completely over. <laughs> oh yeah, God. it's it's so bad, man. It's it's so fucking bad. Like, oh, I I went out of my way, made a new character so I could play with them and kind of go through the grind as well, too. But it's just like it wasn't the same for him. It changed right. him fundamentally as a human <laughs> being. Like, I did this. I was already here. We've done this before. This is already just, accomplished. Exactly. Oh, dude, we oh, yeah. sunk like what? 30 hours in at that point? I wouldn't say 30, maybe like. 20? Honestly, maybe like 29. maybe like 18 hours. OK, 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 OK. <laughs> fair, fair enough. We, we played a bit. Yeah. We played a bit over the weekend yeah. and and it was it was a big grind. But uh, my character's fine. <laughs> <laughs> my char- I have two characters. They're lit, dude. Like, they're good characters, man. I, super I have two characters, too, but I'll, I can only use one. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. How did they mess that up? Did they even explain how it happened? It it's it's bug. it's just a bug that they're having that kind of overlapped from the uh from the the demo that they had put out. Aww. It was a bug that was still resonant there. Mm. It rolled over and it was yeah, it it was a big mess, a big Aww. mess. I mean, it's it's a fun game and they've been doing a really good job of like communicating a whole bunch of stuff to like help people as much as they possibly can. They've been handling it really really well, surprising well compared to things like uh it it's Xander in the chat mentioned Cyberpunk. Uh Mm. Ah, yikes yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah big big yikes out here big yikes out here but um but yeah they, they've been handling it surprisingly well i'm sure they will find out some way to give devin a grievance package um <laughs> you know and so it's 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 gonna be great when we get there Sletcher, do you plan on playing the game at all i don't know my problem with playing new games is i get invested and then i get sucked in and i can't get anything done i just got snap and like I was, you know, like Nintendo games, those prioritize over any mm. other titles. And then other than that, yeah, it's multiplayer because yeah, yeah. it's like I don't have to worry about the grind. I can just play for a few games and then get off. You know, mm. you like eighteen hours. I'm like, yeah, if I get into that <laughs> world again, man, it's over. It'd be like, where'd Sledge go? Oh, he's gone, dude. He's gone. <laughs> he's plugged away. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Well, I but mean, it looked you... good though. It looked good though on the it, real because yeah. I know the game. But yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna jump on it or not. It's it's fun, man. It's fun, but it definitely was a time sink. Being a, like a looter shooter sort of game, we, me right. and Devin are, are pretty pretty decent sized fans of games like that. And even we were kind of like, yo, we're playing this a lot. There's a lot of gameplay that we're putting into this. It's yeah. it's, it's 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 a big sink. So if you're busy, like all three of us are, it might not be a good thing to just like sit down and like focus on for too long right. before you're like, I got shit to do. Um, but whenever they do come out with the grievance packages, um. I'm sure me and Devin will play for a little bit longer. And Sledge, if you do decide on, just let us know. We can we can help you walk through it. I will. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, let's go on to our second story here. Devin, do you want to take this one on for me, baby? I know that yeah. this is right up your alley. Yeah. So there was a tweet on Konami's page. And uh, in quotes, due to timing, we will not be ready to present at E3 this year. We want to reassure our fans that we are in deep development on a number of key projects. So please stay tuned for some updates in the coming months. While we are not participating this year, we have great respect for the ESA and know that 2021 will be a great success. We will continue to support the ESA and wish the best to all participants at this year's show. End quote. All right. <clears throat> they have a bunch of dormant IPs right now. Mm-hmm. They got Castlevania. Yep. They got Silent Hill. Mm. They got Metal Gear. Ugh. Just to name the big three. I think it's going to be a new Silent Hill, and I think we're going to get a new Castlevania. That's hmm. where that's what I'm thinking. Are you are you into those sludge that move the needle for you at all, dude? Not, you know, it's like those. It's weird because I like I just was so like now you like ask me these questions. I'm like, man, I was a really just a Nintendo kid because like those yeah. games have been Ooh. around, you know, for a while. And it's yeah, like, dude. so I'm over here in the darkness. Sorry. That's okay. Um, it'll come back. It'll come back. Yeah, it'll come yeah. back. So, yeah, no, I mean, I don't know titles. I played them at friends' houses, but I never expanded myself. It's again, like Resident Evil. How many of them are out there? How many titles? Mm, ten? A lot. Ten? Maybe right. more, than, like, more, more than that, including some yeah. of the, the side so, ones. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yo, Final Fantasy 2, you're right. I'm like, oh, 
there's a lot of titles here. I'm like, where do I even start? And people are like, this is a good one. This is a good one. So, no, I, I haven't, but I know the titles. So, mm. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, even being like a Nintendo dude, like you can kind of like resonate with some of the stuff that, that's going on here as well, where it's like there's a lot of big dormant sleeper titles coming from Nintendo that they've been sitting on for a little while that we can definitely be ready for. The interesting thing right. about Konami in this situation here is that a lot of us have been sort of uh, sort of low-key talking about the potential of Konami and Hideo Kojima getting back together, which is uh, the the director from the Metal Gear Solid games and currently right. the newest director for Kojima Productions of uh, Death Stranding. Okay. And, uh, right. and there is some really, really, really sick shit that Kojima has a real bad habit of teasing all of us with all the time like he'll do like like some stupid like 30 second video and in the background there'll be like a picture of like i don't know will ferrell and it's some kind of fucking <laughs> looped up secret that will ferrell is gonna be voice acting in the next production that he's working on it's wild i love it right. not really of course he's not actually You're working like, with will ferrell i know right yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, did get, he did get Mads Mikkelsen and um, fucking, uh, why am I forgetting his name? Oh my gosh. Uh, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. No, not Mark Wahlberg. Mark, no, uh, Mark. The Rock. The yeah, Rock. The rock. Yeah, yeah, Anyways, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he's already. Gary Busey. Like Gary Busey. <laughs> As <laughs> Carnage. As Carnage. Yeah, because I mean, that's happening. <laughs> he's proven that he, he loves to work with A-list actors for his A-list style games, you know, so it's it's cool to see that. There's also that rumor that Microsoft might be buying Konami and possibly working with Kojima, too. So, mm-hmm. oh. yeah, who knows? Something for it's, the future. I know, yeah. man. Did, Sledge, did you? OK, so I know I get it. You're a Nintendo dude for sure. Did you are you into fighting games at all? Fighting games? Smash Bros. Smash Bros. Yeah, Shocker. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. So, of course dude. Yeah. Um, a little Street Fighter growing up two off mm. the nintendo ah, again yes so it's yes. like if it, it was on nintendo i'm probably gonna touch it at some point right so mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so those yeah. ones moral combat a little bit i had moral combat 11 i played through it enjoyed it but like obviously there's people that are just they have their you know, custom boards they take to their friend's house and they play and i'm mm-hmm. like okay I was like, this is where I, yeah. it's a little too serious for me you know? ah <laughs> yeah so so the reason i ask is because konabi also has a potential chance to be talking about doing some more fighting game stuff i read an article that was sort of loosely talking about that oh, and a, a, a konami fighting game would be super sick to fucking have it'd be i i wish it was an it was we're looking at another Capcom versus Marvel sort of thing here because I love those games. Um, but I mean, realistically, it could be like a new IP, something like that. That'd be fucking dope, be too. Cool. Be cool. um, now, Devin uh, has been kind of like in the talks of Konami potentially getting bought out by people. That's kind of the tinfoil hat that he's been wearing for a little while here. You want to give us a quick rundown on that, Devin? What, what were your thoughts are on that? Well, it's been proven that Microsoft is looking for more studios and publishers to acquire just to expand their their whole um, to expand their game pass library, really. Um, Well, they're looking specifically for a Japanese studio right now. So they've been talking uh, about uh, either Konami or Sega really being the big two that they might be purchasing. So and then just hearing the rumors about them possibly working with Kojima it would just make more sense to me that they're going to try and secure that Metal Gear IP and have Kojima work on it, but they have to acquire it from Konami, essentially. I'm, now, here, so. here's the deal, Sledge. I'm not sold on it. I'm not sold on it. I think he's full of shit. I think this guy, Devin, over here on the left side is just completely full of fucking shit. You know what <laughs> I mean? How much did you read into it, though? You know what I mean? Because he's yeah. like new stuff on what he's talking about. And I was like, damn, he did more research than I would have. Yeah, hey, yeah. you know what? Like, I, I get it. Like, Ko- Kojima is a big name. I want another Kojima Metal Gear. I really do. I get it. Mm-hmm. I just don't fucking see it, boys. I don't see it. You know what I mean? Like, Ko- I, I think, mean, he, I think he Koj- was supposed to do Silent Hills. So. He was supposed to do Silent Hills, but he's not now. He's not now. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? We'll, hey. we'll see. We'll see. Devin, yeah. we'll, we'll put it. We'll put a pizza bet on it. You know what I mean? We'll put it. We'll hey, put a pizza beer. If bet. I'm even half right and Kojima just works with Microsoft, I still get pizza. You get a slice. <laughs> you get a slice of pizza. How about a that? slice? And I'll put a, a I'll, I'll put a little. That's like a half a little, a, pizza. a little, <laughs> a little smooch on it. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll like, uh, 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 just like right on the pepperoni for you, and it'll be like we're we're making love. We're attached. <laughs> oh my god. 
by soul. Anyways, we're going to move into our next news story here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sledge. Welcome to the show, dude. <laughs> I'm sandwiched right in the middle of these two on the call. Oh, <laughs> man. On the call? Thankfully not on the actual show because yeah, I'm right. between you guys <laughs> and that's right where I want to be. <laughs> our next news story talks a little bit about our man Chadwick Boseman who unfortunately passed away. But this next one, uh, it, it's Black Panther 2 was reshaped to respect Chadwick Boseman's death. This comes from Nadira Goff from Screen Rant. I did condense this a little bit because it was a bit of a big read, but I want to kind of get the key things in here. <clears throat> In a recent interview, actress Lupita Nyong'o opened up about the realities of creating Black Panther 2 in the wake of death of leading actor Chadwick Boseman, uh, who portrayed the Black Panther, a.k.a. King T'Challa of Wakanda. Uh, in the first film, died last year at the age of 43 from colon cancer. Uh, the sequel to Black Panther has been highly anticipated since the film's first release, but Boseman's untimely death has brought up many questions about the state of the future film. Uh, Boseman's co-star and love interest in Black Panther Academy Award winning actress Lupita Nyong'o revealed that the sequel was reimagined to properly address a world without T'Challa and without Chadwick Boseman. In the interview, Nyong'o explains that filming the sequel will be incredibly difficult for her because she is still immensely grieving over Boseman's passing. She goes on to briefly mention the future of the Black Panther sequel, explaining that Coogler made the right approach. Nyong'o talks about how Coogler reshaped the entire second movie to properly address Boseman's passing and to respect and honor the incredible person and talent that he was. Uh, quote, but at the same time, we have a leader in Ryan who feels very much like we do, who feels the loss in a very, very real way as well. And in and his idea, the way which he has reshaped the second movie is so respectful of the loss we've all experienced as a cast and as a world. So it feels spiritually and emotionally correct to do this. And hopefully what I do look forward to is getting back together and honoring what he started with us and holding his light through it because he left us a lot of light that we're still going to be bathing in. I know that for sure. End quote. Sledge, are you a Marvel fan? Yeah, that I am. That I am. Well, cool. perfect. So all of us have been affected by the passing of the late Chadwick Boseman in one way or another. Uh, rest in peace to the king, him fucking self, and Wakanda forever on that end. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's nice because I'm sure all of us as MCU fans have had a little bit of concern on how they're going to follow up Black Panther now that Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman has unfortunately passed away. Um, it's cool. This is cool. I feel like having the, the cast being a part of, like, Feeling like they're, they're doing the sequel justice um, is, is a really good direction to have. Devin, I, I know that Black Panther was just as close to you as it was close to me. How are you sitting on this, dude? I mean, I that was one of the things I thought about, you know, um, moving forward after, you know, Chadwick passed. Um, I, I had a really hard time thinking about how they were going to do it, but his sister Shuri ends up becoming Black Panther anyways. So it, it's really good to hear that they're going to be doing him justice, uh, not only just, you know, his character, but also his real life passing. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to see what it'll be, because they've always been really good um, with the Marvel movies and the Marvel content lately and really addressing issues and, you know, emotional feeling. So I'm actually looking forward to it a lot. Yeah. Good shit, man. Sledge, how, how are you sitting on this, dude? You know, I watched the first one. It was really, really good. And then he had a big part, obviously, in Avengers. So I, I always liked his character. And I don't know. I'm a Carolina Panthers fan. So Black Ooh. Panther got tied in. And it was actually this little um thing I had. I don't even know where I got it from, like a yard sale or something. And it was literally the Black Panther was on it. But it was like a collab between the Carolina Panthers and the Black Panther. And I always thought it was really, Whoa. really cool. Yeah, it was like this really cool illustration. That's all it was. It was like a little thing that you like put on your desk or you could hang up on a wall. And I had, I don't know what, what happened to it. I'll have to find it sometime and show, show it to yeah, you. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And the sure, Panthers logo sure. in the corner and then had like a jungle scene and it had the Black Panther on it. And I'm like, this guy's really cool. I didn't really know what it was. And then, you know, as Marvel's developed, all these like heroes keep dropping left and right. And I don't read the comics, I just watch the movies. For sure. So for they sure. keep throwing them, but they, they brought that one up. His character design and all that was really, really cool. Um, so, you know, I was looking forward to the second one and then you hear what goes on with him. It was kind of through everyone, but he kept that quiet, right? Like you mm -hmm. guys didn't know about it until they announced it, right? Mm -hmm. That he had colon yep. cancer. Yep. Yep. So it kind of threw him by shock. And, you know, I give him a lot of respect because I read some articles that he was going through it while he was acting all this time for those yeah. movies. Right. Yeah. So I'm just like, I, I get, you know, put yourself in that shoe for a second. Like you, you don't even know what your outcome is going to be in life, but you're still like going through with this for 
for, you know, social reasons, for the movie reason, for fan reasons, for everything, you know what I mean? And it goes way past the lifetime. And um, so it, it's sad to hear, but yeah, it sounds like they're doing justice. And I read a little bit on that article as well before the sit down. Um, so I, I hope it pans out well. Yeah, yeah, me too, man. I, it's it's awesome. Like like you mentioned, Marvel hits so much deeper than just being a film or comic book property, and so it's it's nice that they're trying to make sure that they tread these waters lightly because of something as as pivotal as this when it comes to Black Panther and the lives of the of of Black people. It it's they have to do it justice. They have to do it justice. Just like right. with us, you know, talking about things like Shang Chi, they have to do that justice. Because right. then they have dudes like me and Sludge here that are super pissed off because they botched in another Asian culture fucking right. IP. And it's like, you know, we don't want that to fucking happen for any person of color community whatsoever. Right. And so now also with that said, can we talk about how fucking hype Shang-Chi looks? Can we Yo, talk about that? Oh, yeah. You know, Sludge. Funny, before we even talk about the hype about it, I kept joking, right? Um, in, in my dad's office, because I'm, I'm the only Asian guy in my neighborhood because it's yep. upstate New York. For and sure. I'm like, where is the Asian Marvel hero? I was like, anyone got an answer? And they're like, they're like, um, what is it? Doctor Strange, they're like his sidekick. I'm like, that's a sidekick. I'm like, yeah. I'm talking main. You know, I'm like, where's our movie? And literally a week later, came out. I'm like, oh shit, there it is. I was like, wow, yeah. I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and, then, like, oh, and then someone in the window is like, shut the fuck up, because you're in New York, right. you know. You're... Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just funny. And I was like, whoa. When I watched the trailer. It looks really cool. A lot of Asian cast members in there, so I'll put some light on them. I hope that uh, for them it works out like for their future too. If it goes well here, you might see them somewhere else. So I'm hyped for it. I'm hyped for it. It's gonna be big hype, dude. I am way fucking stoked on that. Um, let's kind of move into our next segment here. Uh, Devin, this is one oh, that yeah. you threw my direction. Throw it fucking down, my name. Oh yeah. So uh, Microsoft confirms Halo Infinite will have crossplay on Xbox and PC. This comes from Mel Ramsey at GG Recon. Halo Infinite will support crossplay and cross projection uh, progression when it launches later uh, this 2021. Matt Booty, head of Xbox Game Studios, explained exactly <laughs> what you've never heard his fuck, name before. Fuck! I was I was hoping I could hold it in. Fuck! I'm sorry, Matt. I'm sorry, Matt. If you end up listening to our podcast, I'm so fucking sorry, dude. <laughs> My he's, God. A, he's a great guy okay he is he's a good dude he's a good <laughs> dude but his last name's booty yeah it's 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 you know i can't i can't help it all right i'm a human being a human being is gonna think that's funny <laughs> he's already got the booty don't worry about it yes he does yes he does and i want to all continue right. Devin. continue <laughs> all right matt booty head of xbox game studios explained exactly what they've been up to in a blog on an official xbox site he said, and I quote, a big part of our role as a platform holder and a game publisher is to connect players with games no matter where they play. Over the last 18 months, we've launched games on PC like Age of Empires 2 and 3, um, oh, 3 Director's Edition, I believe, yeah. and uh, Gears of War Tactics, Wasteland 3, Minecraft Dungeons, and Microsoft Flight Simulator, many of which topped the Steam charts at launch. We're looking forward to delivering more PC content, including Age of Empires 4 later this year. Whether we are new genres for established franchises, the next iteration of a classic favorite, or the evolution of a storied PC brand, we're making games that PC players love to play. Um, we also quote, we know many of you play across more than just your PC, including on Xbox and mobile. That's why we're excited to announce Halo Infinite will support multiplayer crossplay and cross project progression when it releases later this year. That means if you're playing on PC, you can play with your friends on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S. It also means that multiplayer customization and progress will follow across all platforms. Man, it's hard to say Series X and S. <laughs> like, back back. like <laughs> i love the consoles but damn all right <laughs> concluding he said we're also using the cloud to make console gaming accessible on even more pcs while not meant to replace native pc gaming xbox cloud gaming allows xbox game pass ultimate members to play over 100 console games on a wide range of computers from lower spec entry-level machines to older devices that otherwise couldn't handle games that require more power that's pretty cool. 
um the fact that they're making x cloud available to everybody like you can just pop up like a 10 year old chromebook and as long as you have a solid internet connection with a browser you can still play all those games That's mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. so sledge i are like you, that are, are you on the halo train are you on that halo train? i i am I am mm-hmm. um, not as much as some of my boys were because I okay. want Call of Duty. Like I said, in high school, some of them got some of them played Call of Duty as well, but they got sucked into Halo and Halo three was the one that I feel like a lot of people resonate with more so. But that's one yep. that got me hooked. I never mm-hmm. actually owned the game, which is wild because you could oh. do you could do multiplayer online back then. Right. My yes. 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 Yeah. yes. I would yes, go yes. to my boy's place, which I was hanging every weekend anyways, playing Call of Duty during the uh. week and then playing it with him. So I never mm-hmm. bought the game. And I never bought any of the titles because they were the big fans and they'd hand it to me afterwards and I'd play the story on my own. So yeah, I never yeah. actually owned one. But yeah, nah. The only thing that it drives me nuts about him is shoot, 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 punch. I always am like, oh, that's how he's dead. It's like, not the <laughs> yeah, just the gun in his face. But that part always got me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, you know, awesome. I, I, I will say this. I'm pretty excited with uh, some of the um, travel movement that you actually get in the next one that's coming out because they're giving you a freaking grapple hook. Oh no. shit! Are they really? That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. You get a I've been, hook. I haven't kept up with these updates, so this is all yeah. new to me. Yeah, and yeah, for sure. Multiplayer is going to be free to play, and it's cross play, and it's cross pr- progression. Which yeah. is cool. Which is yeah, so it, it's yeah. just making it available to everybody. Essentially, right. they're they're pretty much handing you this game because that's Except all people players. play. Who? <laughs> it's it's going to be lit, dude. I I've I've never been a massive Halo fan myself. Like I have played. Don't get me wrong, like, I've always, just like Sledge, like, I was playing with my my homeboys and stuff, and I actually, I bought Halo 1 on PC, that was, like, one of the only PC games, really, that I had, like, played, pro- besides, like, Age of Empires, like, The Sims and shit, mm-hmm. but, um, but Halo 1 was kind of the only PC game that I really, really played, and then all of my, rest of my experience with Halo 2 and Halo 3 and, like, all, everything following up after that has always been at my homie's house doing couch co-op. And like online multiplayer right. and stuff. And so it was like most of my experience was that. And now just hearing all this news about like Halo multiplayer being new, like free to play and like being cross platform and stuff. I am fucking sold. I am so mm-hmm. damn sold on this shit. dude. And like how how much a better way to make Halo more hype than giving us like a free online multiplayer that people are just going to eat up all day long with that drop. Oh, yeah. All right. day long. Oh, yeah. The the amount of people that are gonna be hopping on that game is gonna be no pun intended game changing. It's gonna be out of this fucking world, man. Like all the people that are hype on like a- Apex and Warzone and stuff like that. Like, I get it. They're good games, they're fun games, mm. but imagine what's gonna happen when Halo Infinite oh, multiplayer sure. drops, dude. Yeah. Oh, go you wild. know, the one thing I really want to see is how they're going to compete with Warzone and Apex and Fortnite, because you know that they're going to have to come out with something that's similar to a BR eventually, no. because no. actually the the campaign is an open world as well. Mm-hmm. So it already has a big enough map established to do something like that. Oh, interesting. Well. I See, I yeah. didn't even know that. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's cool, it's nuts, dude. Now, here, I, I have to push back on you push push back on on this because i think that they don't have to do shit i think yeah. that it's it's halo it's one of the most popular franchises in video game mm. fucking history they could honestly just make it look good give us some fun content and just drop mm. the fuck out of it and ep and people will just bury themselves like a bunch of fucking leeches onto that dude Mm -hmm. like i i mean it's cool the idea that you that you have on like them pushing for vr to be the next step of like the the halo world so to speak Mm -hmm. is is definitely a direction that they're going to go to i just don't think that they need to yeah i i wouldn't say need to but maybe to keep that multiplayer base because if it is going to be free to play as well like they need to have that attraction you know because as we've seen with Call of Duty, you know, Team Deathmatch and all that stuff only goes so far where Warzone has totally taken over that whole multiplayer uh, avenue right. for Call of Duty. Yeah. You know, right. So we already kind of saw it happen for one franchise already. You know, it's very possible that they're probably going to put something like that because Battlefield's doing it, too. You know, they did that firestorm with Battlefield 5 and they're going to be coming out with a new one on Battlefield 6. So and um, you know, sure. button on that, like. I think that it's also good to have these mm. BRs in. I mean, they have the funding. Obviously, it's freaking yeah. They're huge. 
So right, right. you might as well do it one for two reasons, because it's good to have the variety for your players to stay in your game. And they're not mm -hmm. leaving to be like, oh, man, I'm worn out from like you're saying, like a team deathmatch type of feel to well, let's go play mm -hmm. Warzone now because Halo doesn't have their own BR. If, yeah. if I was a company, they're gonna be like, well, why don't we just make our own thing very similar mm -hmm. to that? So they're still on the Halo title and they're still with us here. Yeah. And if they, you know, if they cross correlate the like leveling of things that they do, like gun leveling or whatever they decide mm -hmm. to do. Um, with that progression they've been talking about, that'll also be a push because people do get burned mm -hmm. out from just multiplayer over and over and over. Yeah, and out, yeah, you yeah. know, something long like a thirty-minute game. So it's, mm -hmm. just, it's weird, but right. Yeah, not only that too, but BRs are like the top of the esports space, unless you're playing Dota or League of Legends. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But like mm -hmm. they are. That's that's like the top tier of first-person shooter multiplayer right now, or third-person for that matter. Yep. So I. I think it would be really smart for them to implement something like that. Do you, do you think they're going to do a battle royal on this? I do. If if it's not on launch, it'll be within six months of launch. Okay. Yeah, Modern Warfare okay. took a while on theirs too. Yeah. They like dropped their game and they kept it hush for almost like a year, I think. And yeah, everyone knew what it yeah. was. Like, yeah. oh, we're doing something. We're like, we all know what you're doing. And right. then they're like, right. dropped it. And it's now one of the best BRs, in my opinion. Like, I don't yeah. hear as many people be like, oh, I'm on the Fortnite grind anymore. It's a lot of Warzone. Plus, all the mm. creators moved. You know, so what happens yeah. with Halo? You talk about people like Ninja, who his foundation is Halo, right? So mm -hmm. is he going to move out of the BR realm and jump in here and then start streaming that heavily? And then everyone else is going to move? You know, I don't know. It's kind of mm -hmm. exciting, though. There's there's yeah. a lot. There's a lot that could happen. I mean, another big part of it, too, is just the nostalgia factor. Even like it's Xander here in the chat says uh, it's it's like they're building on that couch co-op nostalgia and want people to be able to hop on Halo with their buds like back in the day. Mm -hmm. And that's 100 percent true, dude, because it's like thing things like that is what makes the IP, the name, the brand of Halo so big. That's going to make it such make such a difference for them when they drop. Like, you know, like Sledge was saying, there's going to be streamers that have not really played Halo multiplayer for a fucking minute and they're going to see this and they're going to want to fucking hop on it and it's going to make all of their following, all of their their fans, all of their right. audience, all their friends, everyone want to hop on that and it's going to blow the hell up. It's going to blow the, the, the gaming world on, on its feet, at least for a little while, you know, mm -hmm. at least for a little while. And to add on that, if you don't have an Xbox, if you don't have a gaming PC, if you don't even have a computer or anything, but if you have an iPad or a phone, you can just do uh, xCloud and still be able to play that game with your friends. I've tested it before. You just hook up to a controller. You know, you got that little bracket and I played Halo 5 multiplayer that way and it worked perfectly Damn. fine. Yeah, yeah, that that X Cloud gaming shit, man. It's mm -hmm. and that's we're we're talking game changers here. That's it. Microsoft oh, is, sure. is is just yeah. hitting us with all of, of the goodies, dude. I'm, I'm wasted stocks. on it. Yeah, Buy the stocks now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They go, oh, Sony, you got exclusives. We're in everybody's pocket now. Yeah. <laughs> oh right, yeah, right. dude. They're becoming, yeah. Like, they're becoming like Apple for gaming. It's kind of crazy, right? Oh, yeah. hey, that's a good way to put it. That's yeah. a good way to put yeah. it. Because I mean, that's kind of the direction that they're fucking going, isn't it? Right. Accessibility yeah. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the only and reason they're not working with Sony is because Sony's like, no. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. They don't even want to do crossplay. No. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. So Sony just notoriously does not play well with others. It fucking breaks no. my heart, honestly. It's like weird. because because Sony could totally do all this. They could totally right. fucking do all this. Did you guys know that Sony used to be um develop they were developing a disc drive for my uh Nintendo back in the day? Yes, there's and, a split. Uh, yeah, and that's yeah. why Nintendo is its own thing. Yep, they were yep. both the same company with the same people in it. Yep, yeah. All the history of Nintendo is very interesting. I don't know much about the Sony side of it. Yeah, but um, yeah, the no. Nintendo side of it, it's yeah. all connected. It's all in Japan. That's the thing yep. with it. So it's weird. Yep. The PS One was supposed one. to be a Nintendo console. Yep. So, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Hey, did you know that the head of Xbox Game Studios' last name is Booty? Can you fucking believe <laughs> Yo, that, dude? dude? Can you believe <laughs> that? that? Yo, Booty. chat, chat. Can you fucking <laughs> believe that Matt Booty's last name is Booty, bro? I cannot believe this shit. Yo, I was. I did not Dr. wake up Booty. this morning you, just doctor. just just needing this realization. You know what I mean? I I did not. Mr. I woke Booty. up, got my big morning stretch, drank my morning cup of coffee, and I was not at all prepared for Matt Booty to come up in my life today. I was really not. Uh, let's let's kind of speak. You know what? You know what? You know what? <laughs> Uh, segue, bad, bad segue, but we're doing it. We're talking more booty, guys. 
<laughs> our oh, next segment is going to be sort of our hands-on experience segment. Um, I want to kind of move into uh, talking with Sledge a little bit because I know that you've been real busy. I know that you've been way fucking busy here. But have you had any time to play or watch anything that you think would be good for the chat to kind of check out? Um. When you when you said that earlier, I thought of something. I don't watch a lot of TV. I really don't have time. I'm a big anime guy, but I stretched oh. a little bit away from it this time around. And the thing oh. I'm going to suggest isn't anime because you hear people online like, oh, Jujutsu, Kaisen, you know, Demon Slayer. I'm like, but everyone's hearing about that, right? Mm -hmm. So why talk mm -hmm. about it? You know, I mean, it's already been heard. Um, another one that's actually um, a derivative of manga is Alice in Borderland. It's not like new, new, but it's on Netflix and it's good. It is I, okay. That. Yeah, I have watched that actually. It is good. Oh, it's it's good. good. It pulled me in, and the first episode was a little confused, but then I was like, whoa, this is crazy. And mm -hmm. they don't fool around. They don't fool around okay. with like, the death and stuff. Like you get into it and you're like, didn't see that coming. So um I have it's not gonna have watched another, it's gonna have another season. Yeah. Um, I think they're like 40 episodes, uh, 40 minute episodes, maybe like eight or nine of them. But I was like, I was like, the way it was written and the way it was, I was like, this has gotta be like a manga. And I looked it up, I'm like, yup. It's yeah. a manga. I was like, they decided to go this way with it. You know, instead of animating it, they were like, let's do like a, you know, real live action almost. So it's good. It's good. That's what I suggest. But in terms of games, um, I would say Pokemon Snap, but it's still in the plastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's not the only thing that I would say in terms of new. But I do want to give some shout outs to one of my boys. Um, the name of the game is Goose Goose Duck. It's free on Steam. It's a beta Ooh. was just released and it is like Among Us 2.0. 16 okay. players, in-game proximity. Um, you can hide your code on screen and you can copy it direct without the audience seeing it and joining your lobby. Okay. Um, okay. So it's got two maps currently and it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I think a four to five man team and uh, they got huge funding and they just released it and they did awesome. So check it out. That's the only thing I can say for yeah. games. I haven't played it. I haven't even played it yet, but I, I do shout it out. Okay. I just downloaded it. I just started the download. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ, you're so it's, fast on part, this shit. <laughs> it's got Twitch drops too. So if you, I don't know if you can stream it that way, but if you watch, you have to look into it a little bit. If you watch, you can get literal currency for the apparel and the, the game or the okay. cosmetics. Okay. Um, yeah. Among Us kind of didn't do as much for that. So I thought they, I think right, they right. thought outside the box. So, yep, those are my suggestions. Right, for mm -hmm. sure. Okay, cool, man. Oh, yeah. Let me let me actually ask you real quick too. What is your all time favorite game? Can we can we hit you with that? Can we hit you with that real quick? Do you have one that just like that's your one? That's your one? You know? You know, it's funny because it's like replay value of it after a while is not like there, and it goes through yeah. classics. You know, and it's funny because my buddy actually sat down and goes, you know, like what what's like one of your best gaming moments and stuff and I'm like that's a hard question to answer when you've been playing for 20 plus years you know mm -hmm. um i'll always say like call of duty was good and it had a place in my heart and like i put hours upon hours in like in high school on that you know but nintendo roots again you know um pokemon silver pokemon gold those titles were the ones that hit the heaviest for me and i go back and there's a nostalgia there and you know once you beat it you beat it and you catch everything you catch everything but like if you were to hand me one right now and be like play i'd be like yeah i'm gonna give this a few hours today and just appreciate this again you know it's mm -hmm. like it brings back that memory so that's like the ultimate game you know what i mean i wouldn't be like yo go play it it's great to someone right now they'd be like this is a game from the 90s dude or you know early 2000s <laughs> but for me yeah that's the one that holds true okay mm -hmm. all right sick dude Devin, what have you been playing or watching dude what, what's what's your one you want to talk about today so I'll start with what I've been watching. I actually started watching uh, the DCEU Titans on mm. HBO mm. Max. Okay. And okay. I like it because it's an alternate universe of what they've been doing with the movies, you know, mm. but uh, it's, it's way more graphic, way more dark and adult themed. Um, you know, it's pretty much the story of how the Titans happen and how Robin becomes Nightwing and all that. And, uh, it's it's got a lot of good choreography in it and the effects actually aren't bad i'm on like episode seven now i think okay yeah yeah and it even has a little bit of crossover with uh the doom patrol show as well oh, which uh okay. brendan frazier's in that by the way so holy shit brendan frazier's yeah. back yeah, yeah he's, he's back uh, oh wow yeah, he's in doom patrol i forgot the name of the character but he's a he's a robot essentially Oh, oh yeah. dude, that's so fucking cool, man. I love Brendan Fraser, dude. 
Yeah. Like I, I, I'm glad. I hope he finds success with that because he deserves mm. it, dude. That guy's gone through some shit. Like he definitely deserves. Oh, it. Yeah, yeah. Wait, has. what do you mean? What kind of shit has he gone through? Well, I don't even Bre- know about it. Brendan, Brendan Fraser fell off the face of the planet because of uh, some unfortunate sexual uh, assault stuff that had happened to him. Oh, way back. That's why he fell out and was kind of going through the ringer for a little while. And so I, I'm super stoked to see him back and see him kicking ass in whatever way that he needs to because didn't, that all for sure. Didn't someone steal a bunch of money or something from him too, like an accountant or like dude, a brother? He's, he's gone through so much shit, yeah. man. So much <laughs> shit, dude. Oh, God. Like, uh, God, man. Yeah. Like the the poor fucking guy. Like, but yeah, dude. I I hope he comes back and starts whooping ass. Yeah. I'd love to see him in another Mummy movie. That'd be fucking great, dude. I like I really the Jungle too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. In oh, Encino yeah. Man, give us Encino Man reboot. Let's fucking go, <laughs> dude. <laughs> All right. So uh, moving on to what I'm playing, I actually started playing this game called second extinction it seems like a more of an indie style game but it just came out in early access on game pass for pc and console and it's like left for dead meets to rock like waves of dinosaurs like all different kinds like uh raptors t-rexes triceratops like all sorts of shit and you there's like a mode where you can run around this island like a free free roam with uh up to three people and uh you can do like little like kind of like ubisoft far cry style like things where you clear out camps and do like little missions and zones and stuff or mm-hmm. there's actual like storyline quests and missions and stuff that oh you can do. shit and, okay. uh, it's very it's very you know go to point a to b to c and stuff but uh it's fun it's a good time waster is it uh, uh is it is it fps or third person yeah it's first person the gameplay is very similar to apex where you have a ping system you have uh two abilities you get a regular ability and like an ultimate of uh, ability and uh you know there's grenades stem packs uh different kinds of weapons and stuff gatling guns uh Grenade launchers, auto rifles, shotgun, <laughs> sniper, you, you name it, dude. It's you just, really just gory. Get this into Jurassic World, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Let's yeah, just... it's, it's actually, that's what it is. You're on Jurassic Park, dude. Um, and you have to do a second extinction because the dinosaurs took over the planet. Oh, the that, okay. Oh, the planet. Okay. Yeah. okay, I so. see I see the play in that title now. Yeah. That's fucking rad, dude. I'm so, yeah. I, I'll play that with you because that yeah, sounds fucking I, cool, dude. We should stream it sometime. It's uh, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Um, other than that, uh, I pl- played a little bit more near Automata and a little bit more Outer Worlds, but I just kind of keep hopping between the games, you know, uh, just slowly progressing. Good shit, man. Good shit. Well, I unfortunately haven't really been able to play too much because I've been so busy recently, just kind of taking care of everything in the show and then kind of trying to like slowly make my way through Resident Evil 7 so I can justify playing Resident Evil 8 Village. But um, my my main thing that I want to talk about here, actually two things that I've watched. Uh, one is I watched the brand new Michael B. Jordan movie on Amazon called Without Remorse. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to talk about it. I really do not <laughs> want to talk about this fucking movie, guys. It's so bad. Oh no, it it's bad? so bad. I'm like, oh, okay, God. look, like it, it's it's a pretty basic action hero revenge story. The guy who's in the military, his wife, his pregnant wife gets killed, and he goes out to get revenge for it. You know what I mean? And it's it's got a bunch of different like you know americanized propaganda shit that's that's going on in the story whatever it's a tom clancy story that's kind of all really that you need to know and it's uh michael b jordan just doesn't make a good action hero you know what i mean he just he just doesn't he just doesn't feel action hero you know like there's something about it that just doesn't hit me right but i mean it was was still in black panther though right yeah no he which is surprising good villain yeah, good villain, good villain, bad hero, bad acting. Right, that's that's where we need to be. You know what I mean? No, he's uh, it, it's a it's a fun movie, but it just it just it's just so so just. If you're not into that, into like military movies, you're not going to find any fucking interest in this whatsoever. Whatsoever. That's Tom Clancy. That's an actual Tom Clancy. You're relating it to something like that. It, it's it's Tom Clancy's without remorse. So it, okay, is, it, it is, is yeah, okay. it is, it is a Tom Clancy like property. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, like, if you guys are into that thing, watch it. If you're, if you're not even quite 
put into military action hero shit don't even fucking bother don't bother michael b no. jordan is a beautiful ass man it's not worth it it's not worth it okay <laughs> I, I promise you like my 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 sister like was just being horny as fuck about it it was like i want to watch it i want to watch it i'm like get out of here get out of here <laughs> i want this shit to watch it get get out of here get out of here oh god Demon, <laughs> demon, peasant, peasantry. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I, I love my sister. I'm sorry. Um, not really. Anyways, uh, so the other thing that I actually want to talk about is um, uh, the season finale of Injustice hit the oh, other day. Invincible. Or not Injustice, um, in, in, Invincible. My bad, my bad. Um, the, the game, yeah, the game Injustice came out. Uh, uh, no, Invincible, the last, the, the final episode of the first season hit, and it is lit. If any of you have not watched this fucking show, watch this damn show. Holy hell, man. Holy hell, did they do such a good job on this. I know I've been harking down on, on Devin's ass about watching Invincible for a while now, and uh, there it's... Look, okay, if you're into superhero stuff, watch it. If you're into animated stuff, watch it. If you're into animated hero stuff, watch it. Like, if you're into just gory blood fests on, on, on cartoon characters, fucking watch it. It's incredible. It's damn incredible, okay? And I will, I will burn myself to the ground if people don't start fucking watching this damn show. Sludge, have you found it. an interest in this at all? In, in what? In... In Invincible, Invincible. I don't even, I don't even know what it is, dude. Sledge. Okay, so it is a animated show that is based off a comic book by Robert Kirkman, which is the creator of The yep. Walking Dead, and yep. uh, and it is a story about a uh, a a coming of age story about a superhero named Mark who is invincible like he's a superhero basically the son of superman and uh and his his father who is basically superman is low-key kind of fucking skeezy and it kind of is the story about him coming up as the new superhero and his and having to deal with you know having his father basically be superman and how he's gonna fill his father's shoes and yeah, uh and it's got some real fucked up shit in this show oh, because it yeah. is not a kid show. This is when not a kid it? show. Uh, Amazon. It's an Amazon Amazon's Prime exclusive. Okay. Yep. 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 And it is worth every damn second. The the season finale ends on a note that just the entire episode felt like watching like the the main act of, of Batman versus Superman like oh, over man. and over again. It, it is the most like Avengers oh, Endgame thing I've ever seen in a cartoon ever. It is incredible. Oh, it's incredible. Damn. They they did Who, such a good the job. animation. Any idea? Uh, I'm not actually ex exactly sure on that. What I can tell you is that Steven Yun is the voice of Mark, the oh, main oh. character. I love uh, that dude. Yeah. Oh, dude, incredible man, and he and he does a great job in the show too. So it's it's. It's a real good time. The episodes are not crazy long. They're not like a full hour. They, you know, and 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 each one just goes by so quick, so right. quick. And and I think it's like eight, nine episodes or something like that. You will burn burn through them easily in a matter of a few days. Like it's it's Word. you're gonna get sucked in. It's so worth it. So yeah, uh, audience at home, people listening at home, if you have not watched the show, please for Christ's sake watch the show devin do it he said it like seven times at this point oh my watch god it. watch this damn show devin devin yeah. watch yeah. this damn show okay i'm on episode five <laughs> okay watch cool. it. <laughs> okay that's that's uh, that's what i like finish this damn show yeah um uh as as far as anything else really that i would want to talk about um uh, uh, uh i me and devin played first class trouble the other night, which is also kind of a uh, um, Among Us sort of gameplay style, um, like the like the the thing that you mentioned, Sledge earlier. Uh, you said it was Goose Goose Duck. Was that what it was? Yeah. Okay. Yep, goose, cool. Goose, yeah. Goose, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, so some something that's 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 reminiscent of sort of that gameplay style where you're sort of like running tasks. And you have to find out who's killing everybody, yeah. so on and so forth. It was a really fun game, and we play we played that for a couple of hours, and me and Devin had a real fucking good time on that. I'm actually kind of itching to play it again for another night, um, just to kind of like get more of a full experience on it because I suck ass at it. I kept dying like first person to die like every single fucking time, even if I was the personoid, which is the the killer and the fucking game Impossible, right? they yeah yeah essentially yeah they they would find me out within minutes of starting it's so i've never i have yet to actually have a full-on chance to like really play the game as a personoid and so i'm itching to play a little bit but i have to catch up on resident evil 7 first um, but 
that mm -hmm. that reminds me when you say you die first <laughs> i stopped having to stream that game because it'd be like i have a pixel plague night with yep. the content creators or i play mm -hmm. with the community and every single time it's like who's the factor of a person we know here it's sledge so i would call out <laughs> on shit that was like mind-blowing i have like killer games be like oh we're gonna f them up we're gonna f them up and then literally we get to the table and there's no one dead and they're like i saw a sledge go through a vent i'm like <laughs> i look over my chat and they're like what are they talking about you didn't go through a vent i'm like I literally didn't go through a vent, and they're like, it's him. And I would just get voted off, and I'd oh, die first. Oh, my and I was God. Like, I'm like, you were right. I was a killer. I'm like, but I didn't even do that. I'm like, you just made that up. And they're like, oh, my God, my bad. I'm like, no, I'm done with this Oh, my God. I'm my like, God. I die every time. Like, my chat was like, this is an ongoing, like, joke to a point where I'm like, if I'm playing, and I get voted off in the beginning every single time, I'm quitting. I'm done. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. all right, all right. It was pretty funny, though. <laughs> Dude, that, that, that reminds yeah. me of Tim the Tap Man trying to get a crowd and fall guys for the first like, week, dude. Like that, like that was people so just funny. trolling to troll. It was so great, dude. What, what an event, man. That sucks, dude, because that totally might have like kind of passively ruined your Among Us experience. It did ruin the game because I'm not kidding you. I would like tell the 100% truth when they asked me and be like, yeah, I was over here. Uh, you know, I fake tasks. Be like, I went and did this task and then I like bumped across this person and someone's like, no, you were definitely up top right. And I'm like, I literally said, I'm top left and someone's like oh I saw him up there too I'm like <laughs> I look over the chat and they're like what are they talking about and we would go back to the VOD and be like here's me and what I did I'm like where did you get top right and they're like oh I really thought you were up there I'm like I have the worst luck for this game dude <laughs> I um, actually had the same experience where I was in a discord server with people I know and like some of their mutual friends and same exact experience. I literally left the Discord server because every <laughs> single time, You're like fuck y'all, bro, fuck y'all, like right in the beginning, every single time. So I was just like, I'm not playing this anymore. With yeah, these he, people. Shit. he deleted it. He deleted yeah, I it. Did. You, went, you went and bought like an Among Us like stuffed toy so he could burn it in a garbage can, like you, like Ace Ventura. Uploads the Discord here. <laughs> yeah yeah sends it to each one of them in a private message on facebook his ass naked in the shower burning and um, um among us stuffed animal in a fucking trash can this and they're like, like oh, it's all your fault like yeah. damn <laughs> i fucking love it dude Devin, i'm sorry that I hit you so hard man <laughs> it did i can relate with that it hurts Wait, was now, that, were you in the games too or no it was a different group uh -huh. It was different, a different group. Different oh, group. Okay. Yeah, 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 different there. group. Okay, different okay. group. Yeah, I no, I, I, like, oh, I didn't realize it was that bad when you laughed. It's like, oh, that was a really <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I, I only played Among Us on, uh, on mobile, and so I, I didn't okay. really like dive into like the the voice chat stuff so that they could hear me lie really bad, and so. <laughs> Right, yeah. Now that that's the other part, the other game. Not to go back on that, the Goose Goose Duck with it being in game. You don't have to worry because sometimes people forget to mute their mics and stuff. You know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like I'm gonna jump in this vent, and everyone's like you're the killer they're like oh it just mutes you automatically in the game so you don't have to worry about that shit oh, you know nice, so it's cool. nice. Yeah. is, is it yeah. like a like a push to talk system or is it like uh i think it's just open i mean you can probably do a push to talk option but i don't think you can even talk in the game like when you oh, use your in-game mic it just disables okay. everyone's mics so okay, they just like put all those okay. features into it yeah so they definitely did better um i think focusing on things that among us like didn't i don't know they're like too focused on map making and then there's oh, other glitches okay. that happen. Like literally, I've killed a dude. I chased him, and he hit the button, and I killed. I killed him. And yeah. everyone was like, "Whoa, what happened?" And the person that put the report in couldn't report because he was dead. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> I'm like, and then the dead person's like, "Well, I was just killed at the table as I pushed the button. I guess so. Like, I I can't talk." And everyone was like. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So they had yeah, too many bugs. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad I didn't experience it that way because that sounds like a huge pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> sounds like a real bad experience. Um, but we're here to actually now talk about some good experiences because our next and final segment of the night is here, dedicated to our man Sledge right here. Hi. Um, I'm new here. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey yeah. Hey. What's 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 happening? Welcome. How you doing? I'm really nervous. Yeah, I know. It's okay. It's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be nervous. Yeah, you know it's all right, man. It's, it's all right. I'm sweating. You guys can't see it. We're, yeah. we're not. I want to see it. I want to see it. Um, <laughs> I am. I am on my my A game tonight, boys. Let's fucking go. Um, Sledge, dude, you have been 
working on virus now for a long time and and you plan on working on it for even longer i want to start out by introducing you to the audience a little bit could you have our viewers and listeners at home kind of uh, get a chance to hear who you are what you're about and give us a quick little a quick little you know five minute biography of you real quick all right so started when my parents fell in love okay so anyways. yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah my name's sledge 315 most people just call me sledge we don't put the 315 in there my real name's seth tyler i i say that out but sometimes people freak out about it so there it is on the table i have a background in graphic design i got into it in you know late high school yearbook club because the girlfriend i was with at the time was like i need help i'm like all right and then i just got addicted to it so that's kind of like the bare bones of me and what i become today 10 years later um and in regards to virus this is my second clothing brand which we'll talk about a little bit later but basically it's all around graph design i i like the idea of just designing stuff putting it on t-shirts and i've also found myself involved with overlays for twitch streamers and things like that so i stream myself full time um about three to four times a week now on schedule i've been doing that for four years now coming up in june which is pretty wild to think about and uh, it's a good time it's a lot of fun so that's that's basically the the rundown from upstate New York. Um, twenty seven soon to be twenty eight, but we don't like to talk about that because you know the wrinkles keep getting there and more white hair show. But you know <laughs> we're rocking, we're living the dream, and we're living like we're twenty. You know, so that's it. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. That's sick. So um, let's let's start with this. So virus is is very much sort of like your 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 pride and joy here. And so I want to kind of like Lucy get started talking about that to start out here. How long has virus technically been around for? September 2018 is when we started. Um, I, I want to say it was September, but we, you know, we were hyping up in like August and it probably could have had more time for the hype. But at the time it started with just a t-shirt and a hat, you know, $300 budget and, um, you know, stuff sold out. I, I would say like within a month because I was streaming at the time, it was like my two year of, you know, being in a streaming uh, universe here. So, um, I pushed it towards, you know, the audience and they're like, cool, like gaming brand. So t-shirt hat. And then we started to expand from there. So, um, I guess we're pushing up on our third year now. We're in the start of the third year or whatever, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Now, Devin, I know that you wanted to ask him a couple of things too. You want to sling one at him real quick? Yeah. I mean, um, do you have do you have like any huge like plans or anything big coming on for Virus Co. here in the future? Like anything that you're working on really hard right now? Yeah. Um, I actually can you guys got lucky because we just we actually just made the announcement. I can say this now comfortably, um, because it was really, really under the tape, you know, under under wraps and we were doing contract mm -hmm. stuff. And um, we obviously do streetwear gaming. I probably should have expand on that for anyone listening. It's uh it's an apparel brand. We have content creators and esports team. It started as a gaming apparel brand, more so streetwear. Um, mm -hmm. And we've been able to do more of that now than when we did in the beginning, which is a hat and a t-shirt. I mean, that's not really streetwear to me, but now we're like getting the jackets and we're getting the like, custom patches and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we've expanded upon um, a, a large collaboration. Um, someone reached out and they were like, hey, I see what you're doing with the business. It's looking really good. And it's not like... Um, our our logo is going to be on the apparel but basically we're hosting them and we're designing all the stuff for them and it's going to be on our website the name of the streamer is ham and cheddar and not everyone's going to know that name but go check him out he just okay. blew up like i don't know where if you guys know the name pay money wubby he's a moderator yes. for him he's very tight with him like he's actually been looking at some of the designs that i've been whipping up and taking a look at them um so oh. he's big on youtube and ham has been a mod for him for a while and and, and no way did I, I don't think that pay money like boosted him. I really genuinely think that Hammond Cheddar did it on his own and he's blown himself up to, you know, a crazy extent. Mm -hmm. And he does game shows. You guys should check them out. They're, I've been on a few yeah. of them. They're hilarious. He runs. Oh, the, really? He, he blindfolds himself. Listen up. He blindfolds okay. himself. He has cameras all around his house. He's got a camera on his chest and you have to direct him to find stuff around his house. But he doesn't know what he's grabbing. What? Dude, and the, the viewers get to donate to him to distract. It'll, like, make loud noises in both your headsets, the person guiding him and Ham and Cheddar. And, like, he has, like, 10. Ah. He had, like, yeah, he had Pay Money, Wubby on. He had uh, Alex on. Um, he had Atomic tw uh, Atomic Twins. I think that's what their name is. I think he had Code Miko. He had a bunch of big names on there. He's just killing it. So, anyways, he reached out to us. And so we're going to be doing a collaboration. He announced it literally, like, two days ago. And I didn't know he's going to do that. He was like, hey, do you mind? He's like, can I show him stuff? I'm like, maybe we don't show them what we're working on, but maybe you just tell them that that's what's happening. So he's like, yeah, that's a good idea. So he announced it. And that's like the big thing that we're working on right now. 
I'd say, alongside our um, quarterly drops that we do for apparel. Mm-hmm. Um, True, and there's man. a few other things, too, that are underway that I can't actually say about, but uh, more contract-related stuff. We did pick up an X phase Clan C9 Call of Duty Pro, um, Dito. He played a lot of, I think it was Call of Duty Ghost 2 and maybe 3. And mm-hmm. he jumped on a little bit of the World War. Was it, was it World at War? What was the newest World at World 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 War? War? World yeah. at War? Okay, so oh, I, I don't. War. I don't think that's the newest, the newest one. one. Cold yeah. War, not yeah, Cold, Cold War, War, not Cold, Cold War. War. This is years back. Oh um, yeah, World World War, War Two. Is it World at War. Or World, World War Two. That's yep. what it is. Yep. Dude, it's okay. 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 War, <laughs> War, <laughs> War, <laughs> War, 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 yeah. War, Duty War, 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 to the War, Map Booty. <laughs> oh. God. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Call of Booty. Call of Booty. Mr. Booty, where at? <laughs> so, yeah so that's like the biggest one and he's been killing it i'm like really excited for it and he's been awesome his team's been awesome and we've just been collaborating and i'm excited for it um i don't we you know he people are asking you know what's the drop date and i'm like i don't really have one until we get into production because we're still in the design portion of it but uh that's all i got in terms of that but yeah that's that's some of the big stuff for sure man did that's you super did, rad. did you have any um like big bigger plans as far as like goals and like the far future of like what you want virus to become or be Ooh. i don't have you have oh, you wow. ever even like like had your head in the clouds at that point or oh for sure you know um one of the models that i follow along with pretty heavy is 100 thieves i i feel like out of all the esports teams out there right now i feel like they're the ones that are making the right moves for their future mm-hmm. and i know that we can be like phase clans a dope brand and stuff like that but sometimes i feel like they kind of come off a little bit like they got a chip on their shoulder, and I don't get that from 100 Thieves. I feel like they've got a group of genuine content creators, um, and I don't know if you guys knew this. I, I actually found this out, and I think that this is probably a little bit wrong, but Face Clan is, like, strictly men. Like, there's, like, only, like, a few women on that team now, and mm-hmm. they just started doing that recently. So I'm just like, it seems so, like, exclusive, like they have, like, this motive to it, and it's no mm-hmm. shit on them or anything, but basically when you're modeling your business, like, who do you want to be, you know? Um, right, 100 right. thieves they're just killing it. they have an awesome you know building and they're like showcasing all that stuff and they're not really showboating like houses and stuff and i feel like a lot of the other teams are like look at this team house we have and i'm like that's great but like that's for you to live in that doesn't really help your consumers and people that are like trying to pick your stuff up um mm-hmm. so you know esports i want that to be something of the future obviously we have valorant right now and they're doing pretty good and that's still in the beginnings you know like we haven't even gotten the foundation once we win a tournament or two we can get our name on the maps a little bit more in terms of the apparel, you know, the the ultimate goal you ask, you know, like, where do you see yourself? You ever get yourself in the clouds? It's like there's when you think of sports, right, like actual physical sports, there's brands that are attached, right? Your Adidas, mm-hmm. your Nike, your Puma, right? Yep, yep. I want virus to be that for esports. You know what I mean? Be like mm-hmm. the esports wear, the, the official, you know, brand. So I don't want it to be cheesy, like, oh, like, I, I'm a gamer god, and that's, like, what the shirt says. That's stupid. Like, I want it to be, like, cool stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. because, because we all know there's gaming brands out there that do that, and they somehow make sales, and they got a mushroom that says one up, and people are like, this is sick. I'm like, no, it's not. That's from a game. That's just, like, <laughs> it's a fan-made shirt. It's not in the even thought of. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, I just, I just want it to be like that in terms of the bigger picture you know i I want to be a well-known name and we're getting there and you know the more creators we got on the team you know repping the the brand virus um the better off we are and big thanks to them because it's not something you can do on your own and uh you you respect the creators you pick up and you know all the work they put in it definitely goes a ways we've we've went from like this to like this in terms of growth for anyone that's listening i'm Mm -hmm. literally doing a chart here it was Mm kind of like you know steady growth compared to spiked and it's because these creators that we pick up are just so awesome they push the brand they believe in it just as much as i do um and yeah so that's the big picture yeah it's 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 amazing man i've I've been following you now since i think like the beginning of 2019 maybe yeah just about first hoodie yeah right i I got i got the the first logo Mm -hmm. and you've seen the changes then like in terms of like the designs and all that stuff yeah your your growth has been out of this world and it's 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 been awesome to to see you guys be from where you were to where you are now and it's like i remember going to you guys' website for the first time because i i think i just stumbled across you you guys because of someone retweeting a tweet of 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 uh of the virus page at one point or another and i i think oh no i think it was subsume you oh were you following her or something yeah i think i was following her following yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think I was following her, and then she retweeted a post about virus, and I was like, oh, yeah, I need to check that out because that looks sick. And then I saw it, and I was like, oh, that is hype. That is super hype. Yeah. And so, and yeah. ever and ever since then, just seeing the amount of people talking about you guys 
just increasing right. every month, just every month, more and more people coming in. Yeah. It, it's it's been nuts. I'm super fucking stoked for you, dude. Thank you, thank you. It means a lot because a lot goes into it. And it's not just me, and I don't put credit on myself. I you know I had a meeting today, and I was just like. I appreciate the people on the team. You know, I got a guy that does the blog work. He does like a bunch of research on product, equipment, games, rights, reviews. Granted, right now he's not doing too hot. He's a little sick. So he's holding by. I'm like, you need to just like chill, you know. Um, Sab Samay, mm -hmm. she's been with me since the beginning. She's family to me, though. She's my brother's girlfriend. So oh, I'm okay, really close okay. with her. Yeah, and she's a big driving force for the brand, too, because she's got a great following. She does awesome on Twitch. She's killing it right now. She just started that up. And then, like I said, Fluffy was in the chat earlier. Um, he's the esports guy and on that side. And I have another guy that does design with me. So we've got a really, really awesome team. Two of them are technically part time and the other ones are freelance where I just like pay them per bid type of thing. And um, mm -hmm. it's not it's not just a me thing because it would be literally impossible unless like there was two of me. And if cloning ever happens, please, Elon Musk or whoever is in charge, hit me up so I can do that. Fuck but, yeah, um, <laughs> dude. Fuck yeah, it's, dude. It's a lot and I'm grateful. I'm grateful and I appreciate you guys respecting it as you do. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Dev, yeah. you got you got anything false for him? Dude, I was just going through um, you know, your products and stuff on your website. And uh have you ever thought of doing like shoes before? No, oh, believe me, it's it's definitely on the yeah. uh the notepad. It's more about mm -hmm. where do you get something made and yeah. do it right. Because the biggest yeah. concern isn't necessarily getting it made, it's more like if if I'm gonna do this, I gotta do this. Cause mm -hmm. I've seen brands do it like, oh, drop the shoe, and then you look at it and you're like you shouldn't have dropped that shoe. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Shoe, yeah. Shoes are a tough thing, man. As as they a shoe are. hype beast, my fucking self, because I, I I see them. I like yeah. I've I've talked to Devin about my shoe mm -hmm. problem before. Um, people can be real picky about their fucking shoe games, and it's you know right. I I get your hesitation for it for sure. Um, oh yeah. And when you do, mm -hmm. let me know because I am definitely fucking buy the shit out of those, my guy. I'll right. tell you that I'll right I'll now. Ask you for some freaking insight. Who knows? You know, it's important because it's definitely not my um, forte. Like I've always right, been yeah. involved in just apparel, tops, hats, mm -hmm. so stuff like that. We did joggers before; they did pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. and we got some stuff coming up for the summer drop. I can't really say what yet, but um, that's not tops. You know, it's so it's a little bit different. And we're breaching into it. I want to be careful mm -hmm. not to confuse people though, because they're like, you should make belts, and I'm like, I'm not gonna make belts like that <laughs> yeah right, yeah, right, you know, right and they give right. me weird suggestions and i hate to shoot them down but i'm like think streetwear like mm. go online and type streetwear what are you getting you know so you got to be mm. careful with it people are like you should make a dress i'm like on what planet would i make a dress like, you know, like, no <laughs> offense, but like on what planet yeah. would i make a dress for this it doesn't make any sense yeah. Um, um so yeah yeah, you're, you're, you're not gonna make any though. like trip pants, trip pants. Let's talk trip pants, boys. <laughs> you know what what I mean? are they? Tri trip pants. Yo, do you remember those? packs are dope. I don't know what. They, maybe I do. I just don't know the name. Trip pants. So it t t r i p p. The like old school kids, like when we were in high school, like the goth the goth kids back in high school had like oh. the big baggy pants <laughs> with oh, like all the yeah like, the the hot topic <laughs> pants. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Sure. I just didn't see like I didn't know the term because like I'm thinking I'm like I don't know what those are, but it's funny because tech wear is kind of like that except yeah you know, stylish and fitted, right? Those right, chains right. I, I never understood. I'm like holy shit, man. And the other thing was the pants were like feel like walking through the hallway like a fucking Minecraft character's legs because they were like so <laughs> fucking big, yeah, right? Yeah. So, yo, no, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's Xander says male romp rompers in the chat and uh, yeah, I might, yeah, I might buddy. have to fuck with that, dude. You do like a, th like a thick boy size uh, men's romper. I'll do a photo Just shoot in that men. for you. You Just know what I mean? Men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. actually, um, speaking of like um, sex catered because we're unisex right now, we've done we've done that crop top windbreaker, which did very well yes. um, for the female audience, because I don't you know, like it's not like I'm trying not to do it. It's just more like, what can I do that everyone can wear right now? Because we're small, you know, we're not like huge, mm -hmm. huge. But yeah. down the road, I've already been thinking about like women catered um, fits, you know, um, so because, there's, you know, sometimes there's concerns like this shirt's not going to fit me as well as it fit a guy, you know, um, our, our build structures are completely different. So. And same with the joggers, you know, like chicks were buying them and they're like, oh, like it didn't fit. And I'm like, well, I didn't really think about it. But like, yeah, you guys have bigger hips than I would. So, yeah, you're oh, going to yeah. have some issues, you know, um, Romper calendar shoot, a uh, virus calendar shoot. <laughs> Dude, yeah. yo, you know, Sledge, you? Sledge, can we please just get you in like a virus, like braided firefighter suit calendar spread? Like, can we can we get yo, this? Dude. What do we yo. have to do here at Good Kraken oh, to make man. this fucking happen, man? <laughs> yo, give me give me a slice of that pizza you guys were going to split earlier. Oh, hey, you know, I got you, baby. You know, I got you. Now, that means De Devin has 
has to lose his bet about Kojima, but uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. all rides on this bet. Mm-hmm. You Fuck know, you, Devin. Uh, <laughs> I, I did have one more question for you. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Hit him. Hit him. I, I know this is like usually the case for most, you know, graphic designers and clothing, you know, brands before they start. Did you ever do like a lot of design work for like bands or like local bands or anything like that in your area? Yeah. Yeah, I can go I can go on a long rant about this because um, it's actually a pretty big chunk of like my history. Like I started, like I said, in a year bar club and I was yeah. in a band at that time. It was a metalcore band and it was my first oh, yeah. band and I was a drummer for it. And yeah. I had the you know art skill and I could draw and I was drawing shit on pieces of paper because I didn't know what I was doing. Like, how mm-hmm. can I like scan this in, put it on the computer and then like, I guess, clean it up? And like my buddies are like, that is not how you do that, you know, and the guy. <laughs> This 10 years back, you know, we were, I was a freaking 17 year old kid. He was a few years older. I went to his house and he showed me the ropes and he, he works for virus. Now he's the guy that does half the designs. And it's funny enough that we stuck awesome. together all this time. He was in a band called thoughts in reverse in Syracuse. And, um, they, they had a pretty good name in the local area. Um, but besides the point, yeah. So I did a lot of merch for smaller bands, not like some of the bigger ones in the area, just because, you know, they already had their connections. Right. Yeah. And so I was winging it with the art stuff. It was like, I'll make a shirt. I can do a photo shoot. It was like, whatever I can do, because I ended up becoming a freelancer and that's what I still do today. And you kind of get in the knack of it. And it's funny because like all these things lined up perfectly back then that are still in it now. So mm-hmm. the guy that I do all my print work with and like he does these hats, he, he like was open to do like the sew on patch idea is the guy that I worked with 10 years ago in my first band, you know, and he had like this one screen print set up and like this rented property and he's like hey what's up i'm like i don't know who the hell this dude is his name's drew he's like one of my closest friends now and it's just like he's like yeah we can do like this man I'm like sweet we got like 10 shirts you know you're like we can sell these at our show and um yeah it just kept expanding and it kept getting bigger and then i would come back or i would send new clients to him like hey um you know this this band needs you know 25 shirts made up and then i went back to him in my second band that i was in and we did work with him and then my brother and me started a company called cursed apparel which is a streetwear brand with no targeted niche, which was a big mistake. That was like what I learned was, we were just like, we're a streetwear brand. It's like, we were trying to be supreme without any level of influence power, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So I had the background, so the designs were pretty cool, but I still wasn't fully developed in graphic design at that point. I was like 21, 22 Mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that brand did pretty good. We got some pretty strong influence. We had a kid that was really off Disney. He had like a million Instagram followers and he hit us up out of nowhere and was like, can I wear your stuff? We're like, yeah. And he wore it like all the time, but he never That's tagged right. us. And that oh. was the part that hurt. And you learn yeah. though, you learn. And it was learning. Yeah. And it was cool yeah, because yeah. people still recognized the brand and they saw it and they could read what it said on the shirts and stuff. Right. But he was never shouting us out. You know what I mean? And that yeah. was kind of the trade off. And now it's like when I send someone something, I'm like, it's either a paid opportunity or I'm like, you just need to tag us if it goes well. Obviously, you keep the hat or the shirt we gave you, but if it works well for the future, then mm. we'll hook you up with some cash to post because the last one did well. Um, and that's what I typically am handling, but, um, yeah, so I, I guess to answer the question, the, the music side definitely helped mm-hmm. get me to where I am now. And it's funny cause some of our stuff kind of has banty influences, like our late night collection. A yeah. lot of that yep. feels band merchy. And it's funny because Scott was, he excels at that stuff and he's the one that did like all of that drop. He, he handled yeah. the whole entire thing. I oversaw it and was like, yeah, that's dope, 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 dope. And I'm like, you could definitely see this either zoomies or like a hot topic. Yeah, um, compared yeah. to maybe this recent drop, you probably wouldn't as much. So yeah, a lot, a lot of influence through music, and that's why I'm such a sucker for it too. Yeah, you know? I mean we're all metalcore nerds, so right, all, all right. three of us, man, yeah. all three of us. Well, it's it's actually funny that you you your story kind of lines up that way because me and Devin kind of have the almost exactly the same background. Like me and Devin met when I was starting an old local band here in the Portland area called When the Lights Go Out, and he was our first like or like real guitars that we had in the band. And so me and Devin, and that was 12 years ago, Devin. Oof. No, I think 10 years ago, like 10, 10 years yeah, ago, about, about nine, 10 years ago. And that's how me and Devin originally met. And we've known each other in passing all this time. We both have gone different directions right. with music and so on and so forth. And now here we are starting a podcast together. And it's cool because now like me and Devin have talked a whole lot about business models and so like so on and so forth for good crack. And, and a lot of our background in being in the music world has helped us sort of reflect on how we want to run good Kraken. Right. It's it's dope how you can take that those lessons with you going into something like this, you know, right. And when you're when you're young and you're a kid, I don't know when you guys first got into music, but I was like 16 when I first got into my first band. 
you learn how to manage at a young age. Oh, and yeah. Not everyone gets that experience because they don't teach that shit in school, not high school oh. anyway. Hell no, they don't. Really you know, <laughs> and we've had our experiences, and you guys probably have too, where you're selling tickets, you're getting a dollar per at a venue. Yeah. And I'm, I'll never forget, I had one of my guys, and it was like the last straw with this band because he lost like 10 sales worth of tickets, which is like those tickets were $18 a piece. And yeah. it's like, yeah. you know, the venue's like, where's the money? And I had exactly. to literally go out of my pocket and be like, here's $200 because my fucking boy fucked up. And yep. like, we were tight, but you know, I'm just like, dude, you can't do that. And it was like, someone always had to take the wheel in a band. Yep. And it's rare yep. to find more than one person in that band. And when you do, man, you're, you're winning because everyone's oh, yeah. on top of your shit, you know? Yeah. But you yeah. don't find that in high school typically. Usually it's like, I want to hang out with my girlfriend and, you know, drive over here and go to the movies. I don't want to be at practice. Um, mm -hmm. So you got to get lucky to a degree as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a yeah. lot. A lot of sure, matches in the world. Yep. Yeah, yep. you know, so I, I actually have one more question that I want to sing your way to. Do you do you have any sort of like like direct connection on being um a Asian American and connecting that into you like starting virus and wanting to get into streetwear? Because streetwear is a really big thing when it comes to Asian culture. And like did you does that sort of like inspire you to want to move in that direction or I want to know what I don't actually know how we got into streetwear. I almost feel like my brother put me onto it. So it almost be like, mm. yeah, I had to ask him on it because when we started Curse of Peril, it was like streetwear because I think we just were like, we don't, I think we just sat down and we're like, we don't want to just make apparel tees. We don't want it to just be like, uh, you know, a skull that says curse. And then it's just on everything over and over and over reiterated. We were like, we want to come up with like really custom, cool sleeve print, cool location printing. He must have like gotten to like Bape or something back then or Supreme and then mm -hmm. just kind of got rolling on it. And then in my habits, I'm like, you get away with more in this than you would apparel or it's just almost like merchandising like Sledge 315 and then on the back. So Sledge 315, like we got more creative. So no, not really. But um, a lot of our stuff, I mean, like even on this patch right here, there's Japanese on here um, because of my mom, the background in that. I know obviously there's some brands out there that are like, let's put you know like korean or japanese on there and like it means dragon and it really means like river <laughs> mushroom yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't mean anything so like with my mom it's nice because i'm like hey is that right and for me like i put japanese i put like an american flag and a japanese flag on one of our drops um on one of the hoodies and the button-ups and people are like oh it's really quite cool. like incorporated i'm like well it's part of me like so i want that to be incorporated into my brand in one way or another without screaming this is my brand this is my brand like it's got like my right. background in it right because there's got to be some level of pride and I think that's cool to attach rather than just, you know, virus America, New York, yeah. you know, so yeah. the derivatives there, but I don't think that it ever was because of that, but yeah, you're right. You're right. Like you go on to Pinterest where I do a lot of my like creative ex explorations and there's a lot of that going on. Korean, Japanese, some Chinese is on there too, but you know, and, and the people wearing it is the same thing and they make it look dope. I'm like, man, I, I got to make it, my stuff look more dope because these guys are making it look like insane. And that's tech wear to a degree as well. The pants that they're wearing are like pretty darn crazy right now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Devin, I see you. Yeah. I, gonna hop in on one. I, I, I saw you. No, you looking, you looking no, like no, a, no. I was just agreeing <laughs> with him. Yeah. Yeah. You're thinking about Matt Booty too, huh? I, I can't <laughs> stop thinking about him. I can't Matt stop Booty. thinking about the booty, dude. I can't yeah, stop Matt thinking Booty's about it. Yeah, dude. Forever. Matt Booty is going to be haunting my dreams for the rest of my days now that I'm like, cognizant of like of the fact that he is the the like one of the top notch dudes in xbox it's it's mm. i've seen the name mr. before booty. i've seen the booty before <laughs> mr what? and mrs booty and their son booty oh booty that's growing My, up. david david booty david booty you know what i mean his his I son richard booty dick booty <laughs> no. that's where we're going with this that's where we're going with this and uh and uh this this is awesome i fucking love doing this show man this is great sledge i man it's been go 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 this <laughs> I love, i'm, I'm, I'm happy with part of this look dog like we're all here for the booty all day long you know what i mean i'm always here for the booty let's fucking go uh sledge i got one last actually kind of like slight question for you that i that i was thinking about who is your favorite band of all time oh shit shit i was thinking about this one because this is tough um because i was i was just on with um mikey last night of savage hands and i was like yo what's your favorite band and he said the same thing you know this is hard to answer because it's like when you're a music guy you're a music guy you're like so open to everything you know and there's like what yep. sticks the most overall you know and i was sitting there thinking long and hard about today and 
one, when people ask me like, yo, what's your favorite band? I usually say one of these two bands is either Knuckle Puck or Gideon. Ooh. Those are the two that I go to. Okay? Oh, wow. I know, oh, it's, oh, I know it's like completely different spectrums, but like, no, if bangers, like, what's dude. your favorite pop punk band? I'm like, Knuckle Puck, duh. And they're like, yo, it's like metalcore, hardcore, whatever you want to call Gideon these days. Yeah. I'm like, Gideon. Gideon. Um, yeah, there's just yeah. something, and, and like, I'm more of a sucker for Gideon, I think. I feel like, I, I'm not a huge guy for lyrics. I'm going to be completely honest with you. People are like, what about the lyrics? You don't even know the words. I'm like, I'm not going to lie. Writing music my entire life, I'm more about like how the lyrics land within the music than what they're actually fucking saying. Because sure. I don't want to ruin sure. the music because they're over here talking about, you know, having sex and they're at parties. I'm like, that's just going to ruin the song for me. So I'm just, you know, if I get them, sure. I pick them up, I pick them up. But the right, writing right, right, style right. has remained, in my opinion, pretty darn consistent over the years for the most part. I feel like they've definitely developed because they had an empty sound at the beginning. It was very just like chuggy, dumpy. And they didn't really understand like, leads as well as i feel like they do now and like how to really make their productions hit um mm -hmm. I've seen them mm -hmm. live and they're awesome and i mean literally since the cost album so i'm just like i have no complaints about those guys their latest album hit really hard um the only one that was a little iffy for me i think was was it called calloused i, I think it was like yeah. the white one with nails on it that was yeah. the only one that was like i was like oh no what's happening in this band I'm, um, sorry. I'm sorry i'm sorry i just read in sanders thing in the chat that says Matt hashtag booty. dick booty for prez <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you dude, you got sucked into this shit, dude. Oh my god, <laughs> this is great. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Continue. No, continue. I thought you were laughing about I was like, there must be something funny about this album. And then like, oh, you had like the booty in chat. Get the booty in chat. I, I, I have that record actually um, um calloused or yeah dude, i'm actually a huge gideon fan myself okay. you know, gideon ghost inside for the fallen dreams you fucking name it misery right, right. that's all my shit. Um but that album particularly jumps so much in sound. It sounds like it was recorded like over like three years at like five different music studios. Yeah. 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 It's it's yeah. wild. It's wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, overall, I would say that. But I'll say another band that's like it, it's tough because they've been around for what now? Mm -hmm. Like a decade, mm -hmm. maybe. I, yeah. I, I, this, this other band's actually been around for longer, I think. But they weren't fucking known. And it's Crystal Lake. Crystal yeah. Lake. Oh, yeah, dude, they've oh, been around dude. for a fucking yeah, minute right. and no one ever gave them credit. Yeah, because yeah. they didn't. But they didn't have the same. Ryu just jumped in not yeah. too long back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I really think that he's the guy that kind of turned that key and pushed that fucking vehicle because they all had the talent. But I don't think that they coordinated well. And ever since they've been dropping music videos like on every song and yeah. their production value is insane. Their music's insane. Their writing style is nuts. And he's an animal. He kind of yeah. reminds me of the vocalist of Ghost Inside. I don't know if you hear that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some they're they're, they're both consistently them, good at what they do live, like spot on live. But but right. to talk about Crystal Lake, though, his voice is is so dynamic and so, his range is out of this fucking yeah. world. I never understood it. Like coming from like what they used to sound like just two albums ago compared to what they sound like now like night and day fucking difference like he he was he, even back then he was just kind of doing like writing that hardcore style sort of like vocal pattern and they put out that like uh that that metal version cover of like a uh, roll in by limp Rollin. biscuit or whatever and that's how i thought hype, originally hype ass cover hype ass right. cover they fucking killed it and um and ever since then man he he's just, just he's just non -stop. expanding more and more. Yeah. Their instrumentals are fucking amazing. Right. Their production is amazing. They they do not get enough credit for how long they've been in the game. No. Speaking of Crystal Lake, probably one of the best live bands I've ever seen. They You've seen them before? Yeah, I yeah, saw they, them. They came. Were you at the show? North Lane and I, Era. I didn't. Yeah. Who, yeah. Who else was there? North Lane and Era. You said. And currents. Yep. Oh my currents. god. Yeah. Dude, I was yeah. literally just talking about currents because they're on the same label and Savage Hands is on the label. So I'm like, yeah. yo, what was the like tour with currents? He's yeah. like, unfortunately, yeah. we're a little softer. So he's like, yeah. you know, that's the okay. audience that's wasn't okay. as resonant. But yeah, the, <laughs> nah, those crazy. Dudes are really tight. Uh I actually kicked it with them and um I know their bassist Chris and their drummer Matt. And uh which band are we talking? Currents? Currents, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Those guys are really fucking cool. They're all chill, down to earth dudes. Uh, they play Ibanez. I play Ibanez. It's like I, I heard we, they're really nice they're dudes. Out. Yeah. They're yeah. also a phenomenal band. Uh, their guitarist Brian is also. He is the guitarist. Um. Oh God, what is the band? Uh, not Slaughter to Prevail, but uh, he's he's he shreds in so many other heavy bands too. I'd have to look it up again. Is he in like Brand of uh, Sacrifice or? I think so, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think okay. Because I, I, I've seen some people sort of yeah. like have a correlation between the two. Have you listened to Brand of Sacrifice, Sledge? 
I haven't actually. Oh, you them. you need to check out Eclipse by Brand of Sacrifice. That uh homeboy vocalist in there used to be in a really like uh like pretty basic post hardcore band, and now is just straight deathcore, just going in there fucking oh, it up. Gone. But he yeah. is a uh, half black, half Samoan man, if I remember correctly. That's so he's dope. rocking some of that uh that that Pacific Island love, and uh it's 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 they're they're killing it their entire bands like sound like like sound and like title names and album concepts are based off of anime and so he oh, has really? yeah 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 so brand, brand of cool. sacrifice specifically i believe was was from bleach i think i think it's from bleach someone in chat think- correct me if you're an anime nerd too but i think brand of sacrifice was from a specific anime that he uh concepted the entire first album for okay super fucking sick check out That's eclipse really cool. their, their song eclipse it's so good um so good going going back to like crystal lake and i mean obviously the topic of aapi and stuff you know i think that it was really cool that this band came out of japan and they're pushing their name because honestly there's not a shit ton of bands that are getting a lot of light out that way no um, they're not. at least not in this genre you know and i mean unless you're talking ogs like respect to maximum the hormone i love those dudes yep, um, yep they've yep. made a name for themselves a long time you know and i mean like baby metal as well but i mean and you, you talk about percentage wise it's like oh, yeah. minimal mm-hmm. it's like almost non-existent you know yep. so i think that it's really cool that they they got their light i don't know i respect the the fuck out of them the music video production is crazy and um what they put together in the last i don't know two or three years has just been through the roof um, another mm-hmm. band. You guys ever heard of Pale Dusk? Pale I've Dusk. heard the name. I have not listened. You I've seen the name. You need to fucking listen to them. I, I don't push a band Ooh. any harder than those guys. Um, okay. Only reason I don't like boast about them like crazy is because they're not a long, like, I don't know how long they've been around. So okay. it's kind of okay. tough for me to gauge, but their writing just keeps getting better. Okay. And, um, it's all over the place. Um, Compositional wise, okay. you'll be like, what the heck? So yeah, it's, that's cool. So. Good all music right. talks to you. I could talk about for hours. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Right. All, all three of us could do an entire podcast about our fucking oh, music easily. stuff, man. This is great. <laughs> but what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. We might have to rock, rock around with that. But the last thing I want to kind of like ask you to end out on the show here is uh, what is the next upcoming game that you're most excited about? Oh, it was Pokemon Snap until it just came out. Um, <laughs> Damn, I don't know. This is tough because games come out like crazy and I can't keep up. I'm not going to lie. I don't even know if I have one on my list because like I just get more excited about game updates because sometimes these games they drop like I'm a yeah. big Rainbow Six guy. Yeah. So like yeah. I get excited for new operator releases more than an entire title release because I'm like, oh, do I want to pick up a new game today and play? Or if I do, it usually is because other people suggest that I do so. And it's a few years old. Yeah. So I yeah. don't know if I really actually have an answer. I, I'm like in my head, like trying to think and I'm like, I haven't even heard of a new announcement because I just don't pay enough attention. Yo, Sledge, are you gonna get me back on the the Rainbow Six Siege type train, man? Are you gonna get me back on that? Yeah, because I I I spend entirely too much time playing that fucking game. Uh, It's like my biggest, I would say, mm audience-driven game mm -hmm. on Twitch is Rainbow Mm -hmm. Six. I have a good history with it. I just hit plat for the first time ever, though. (laughs) Solo, yeah, I saw that, dude. Sick, yeah. Yeah. And then I tanked. I went down like gold two the next day. I was like, that's okay. That's okay. That's all right. It's all right. Yeah, no, but I love, I love that game. Um, I, I wish that it does did better or does better, but you know, these other games are beating out. Game mode coming out. The uh, was it the yeah uh, that like zombie thing. Yeah, quarantine. Yeah, quarantine. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They just recently changed the name. I can't remember what what it is off the top of my head. Oh, I'll break. I now. think so. That, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I just I think, will... uh, I mean, you go back. They don't have a BR, so it's like their popularity isn't as doing as good. It's weird. It's like yeah. people yeah. don't want to watch that as much anymore, which is kind of sad, you know. Call back Twitch. to the Halo conversation, <laughs> right? Literally, yeah, that's why I was tying it in. It's like you almost wonder if they're gonna do something for the sake of longevity more than the initial impact. Right, right. Well, I'm sure, like when they when they drop a new title of of some sort, when when rainbow six outbreak quarantine matt booty comes out it'll 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 be you know it'll, it'll i know booty booty gang booty gang um the that'll that'll get people back on the rainbow six hype train you know and i'll definitely right. be there to fucking see that too man sludge do you have anything you want to end us out on anything that you want to plug that you want to you want to hit people with where can people find you Sledge 315 everywhere. Sledge 315 on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, of course. Um, 
I, I wouldn't even say TikTok. I barely use it. But if you want to because you're into it and you want to watch my old stuff, go for it. And then the main thing right now that I am pushing is Virus, Virus Co. It's if for anyone listening, it's V-Y-R-U-S, not V-I. So V-Y-R-U-S Co. Um, and that's where you'd find us anywhere. So that's uh, our YouTube's actually under construction. So not that, but Twitter, Instagram. Um, we do have a Discord server if you want to jump into that. Um, as well as a Twitch, we do broadcasting for the esports side. So those are the places that you can catch us. My streams are Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern. And then other than that, I think we're chilling. Sick, oh, yeah. dude. Devin, you got anything else for our man? Oh, dude, it was a pleasure to meet you. Uh, really cool to hear about all the uh, big things you're doing. I love your gear. Hopefully I can uh, hop on one of the next drops here soon. Oh, hell yeah, dude. And uh, yeah, dude, it's, it's awesome hearing your story and hearing how you got into it. Definitely. I appreciate being on, guys. Seriously, it means a lot. I always get excited when I get invited. I'm like, yes, more social time. I need this. So yeah, dude. Worked out. I'm 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 so fucking hyped to have you on, dude. It's great. I've been following you for a while now. I'm stoked to have you. I'm stoked to eventually have you on again, dude. Like once you Hell guys yeah, start dude. making making more moves and stuff, we will have you on again for sure, man. Definitely. Yeah. Well, everyone at home, this has been the Good Kraken Podcast, a show for nerdy, marginalized peoples, giving you the video game and pop media news, reviews, and discussions that you want to hear live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 1 p.m. right here on twitch.tv slash Show. If you enjoyed the show, you can support us by subscribing below, going to our YouTube channel by clicking the link in the About section of our Twitch channel and clicking that bell and big red button, or by subscribing to our podcast channel by searching Good Kraken with an exclamation mark and leaving a review there. But until next time, booty gang, y'all, Matt booty. booty gang. Booty booty. Booty gang. Booty gang booty. Gang gang. Gang gang.